Welcome to the Four Bells Fitness Emporium and here we are doing workout from home number 76. So today you found yourself in an upper body day and in particular a testing day before we start our new cycle. So our new next week, our next, next week cycle and six week cycle is going to be based on push-ups. So we're going to talk about that a little bit but we do need to get ourselves ready to test the push-ups to get the shoulders nice and ready. We want to do that in a fairly gentle and nice fashion without tiring out all those pressing muscles too much. So we are going to start with three things in our warm-up today. We're going to do some scapular circles, get the shoulders moving and see how the shoulder blades feel. From there we're going to do some spinal circles, moving the T-spine, thoracic spine in circles and mobilizing the upper back. And then last but not least, a wall shoulder mobility piece which is essentially like a downward facing dog, but we're gonna do it on the wall, not on the floor. We're gonna do these three things three times in the warm up. So let's take a look at how they should look. When it comes to our warm up today, we're gonna to do three relatively gentle exercises. As we know, we have a test coming. So the last thing you wanna do is really overload the musculature before we test. We wanna try and stay as fresh as possible. But of course, we wanna make sure that all the joints we're gonna use get fully articulated. So the first thing we're going to start with is a scapular circle. So essentially what I'm thinking is with the hands on the floor in a second, I'm just rolling the shoulder blades back. That's all I'm trying to do. Get used to being in a quadruped position on the floor. It's almost like we're about to do push-ups. And then from here, I'm just trying to roll the shoulder blades back and get the shoulder blades moving in a nice loose fashion. From there, I'm going to do a T-spine rotation or a spinal circle, and I want to imagine that my rib cage is like the drum in a washing machine. So from here, all I'm trying to do is roll my rib cage in a circle, trying to draw the biggest circle I can. Once I've done five in one direction, we're going to change direction and go the other way. Five in one direction, five in the other. Last but not least, we're going to get into a little wall shoulder mobility piece. From there, I'm just going to think almost like a downward dog position. I'm just looking to really open the shoulders and open the T-spine. So hands roughly about shoulder width. I'm going to hinge back slightly, bring the shoulders down, bring the head down, try to open the upper back as much as I can, and then from there we come back up. Push the head down, open the shoulders, open the T-spine, and it's a nice gentle 10 reps, getting those shoulders nice and open. So scapular circles, T-spine circles, and then a little wall mobility stretchy poo. We're doing those three things in the warm up today. When it comes to testing day, the first thing we have to ask ourselves is what do I want to get out of this current six week cycle? So it really depends on where I am with my push up journey. So for some of you, it might be I'm trying to get my first push up. For others of you, you might find you've already got a few push ups, so you're trying to increase your push up numbers. For some of you more advanced people, you might be finding that I already can do a whole bunch of push-ups and I'd like to work towards my own one-arm push-up. So whatever you are working on, depending on your goals, that's what we should be thinking about moving forwards. So there's a few different ways to test today what we're testing. So that's going to be our first set in our strength piece today is going to be a little test. And what we need to think to ourselves is, one, am I trying to get my first push-up? And if I am, that means I should be trying to work out how close can I get to the floor with my scale push-up. We're going to talk about how to do that in a second. From there, if I can do push-ups, I'm trying to build on those, how many push-ups can I do in a row? So let's say, for example, you can do 10. We're trying to see if we can do more than 10 at the end of six weeks. And last but not least, of course, I'm trying to do my own one-arm push-up. I'm going to play around with some one-arm push-up variations and see how close I can get to doing one today. And that way we know what we can build on going forwards. So the first thing we're going to do is test, and then we're going to talk about how the rest of the strength piece should work. So we have tested. We now know how many push-ups we can do in a row. We know how close we can get to the floor when we're playing around with our push-ups. We know whether we're anywhere near close to getting a one-arm push-up. So now we've got to build on those things. So of course we've just done a test, which means you're not going to be as fresh as you normally would. So that's okay if the following sets are a little bit more spicy than you would expect them to be, because we've just given one all-out effort. So when we're starting with our strength work today, we're going to do four sets. Each set is four minutes and 30 seconds long, split into one, two, three, 90 second windows of time. So my first 90 seconds, I'm going to be working on push-ups. And as you can see, I've got level one, which is if I'm doing a scale push-up, I'm going to be doing five to 10 reps. Level two, which is regular push-ups, doing five to eight reps. And if I'm doing a variation of a one-arm push-up, we're going to be doing five per side. 
The next 90 seconds is some kind of row for 10 reps. So if you've got barbell at home, that could be barbell bent over rows. It could be TRX rows. It could be single arm rows with a dumbbell doing 10 per side. Either way, we're doing 10 of some kind of row. And then last but not least, some work for the upper back, keeping those shoulders nice and healthy, as we know we'll be doing a lot of pushing work in the next six weeks to come. We're gonna be doing some Y-T-W-I-I-W-T-Ys, a great sequence for developing the upper back, the rotator cuff, the scapular retractors, the lats, all the good stuff for the upper back. We're gonna be going through that sequence together for 90 seconds. So we're gonna do these three things four times in the strength piece today. When it comes to push-ups, what we should be thinking about is the universal positioning of the arms, regardless of what scaling option we're doing. So even if we're just working towards our first push-up, it should look the same as a push-up on the floor, and a push-up on the floor should look very similar to a one-arm push-up, but of course, it's just with one arm. So what should we be thinking about? When it comes to training, it should always be about longevity. It's not just about working out today, it's kind of work out for the rest of my days is what I should be thinking about. So when it comes to push-ups, I want to be thinking a structurally happy position for the shoulders, which means hands out in front of me. If I imagine I was holding onto a bar, I want to try and bend that bar. Notice how the pit of the elbow comes forwards, and then we're trying to keep the elbows close to the rib cage throughout. So if that means we're doing a scaled push-up today, in an ideal world, we would maybe use a barbell and a rig and we can get incrementally lower, but you can also use the stairs at home or you can use a box or the edge of a couch or a sturdy piece of furniture. I have the hands in that shoulder width position. I'm trying to bend the bar, so that means pit of the elbows face forwards. I'm into my plank, bring my chest down, and I'm pressing away. Nice tight plank position. So that same position is true if I'm doing a full push-up on the floor. Hands are shoulder width, I bend the bar into my plank position and then I'm performing my push up there. And of course the same is true one more time if I'm doing my one arm push up variation. Maybe I'm having just a hand out to one side and moving the hand down towards the hip, but this one arm that's working doesn't all of a sudden do something new. All I'm doing is coming out into my plank, it's a little bit of a wider position for the feet, and the elbow still stays close to the body as we perform our one-arm push-up. So whatever we're doing, elbows stay close, we bend the bar, we corkscrew the arms, and we keep a nice, safe shoulder position regardless of what we're doing with our push-ups. So if you're doing push-ups today scaled, you'll be doing five to 10. If you're doing regular push-ups, it'll be five to eight. And if you're doing one-arm push-ups, it's five and five per side. When it comes to our rows today, we're doing 10 reps, but of course, it always depends on what you have available at home. So there's probably our two most common, well actually our three most common variants we have for rows are usually some kind of TRX or ring row, some kind of single arm bent over row with either a dumbbell or a kettlebell, and then if people are very fortunate and they have a barbell at home, then some kind of barbell bent over row. If I'm doing TRX rows or ring rows, a nice straight plank position, which means as I come back into my plank, I want to think tight bum, tight quads, tight abs, we're just focusing on driving the elbows back and bringing the hands to the chest or the chest to the hands, so if you want to look at it, there should be 10 smooth reps. From there, if we're doing a single arm or bent over row, the mechanical position is reasonably similar. All we want to be thinking is hinging mechanics. So that means I'm going to set myself up with my bar, I hinge into a Romanian deadlift position, and then I'm driving those elbows back for 10 smooth reps. If I'm doing it with a single arm, of course, just find some way to bolster the arm, and maybe with a dumbbell or a kettlebell, we're doing 10 per side. Either way, what we should be thinking is across the four sets we're working today, try and find ways to make it more challenging. If you're doing rings or a TRX, move the feet forwards. If you're using a barbell, we should be adding plates, and the same is true if we're using dumbbells or a kettlebell. So 10 rows. With the Y-T-W-I-I-W-T-Y, we are going through a sequence twice of four movements. We're going to start with the letter I, sorry, letter Y, not I, which helps with the low traps. From there, we come out to a T, which helps with scapular retraction in the rear delts. From there, we bring the elbows down into a W, hands up, don't shoot, helps not only work the scapular retractors, but the upper back. And then from there, we bring the hands down to an I, where we're looking at really engaging the lats as well. So it's not just like, oh, it's just the low traps, it's just the scapular retractors. As we go through the sequence, all of those stabilizing muscles of the upper back and the rotator cuff come into play. So if I'm doing it, I should be doing it on the floor. 
and we're going to spend five seconds in each position. So that means I come out into a Y for five seconds, thumbs up. From there, I'd be in a letter T for five seconds, squeezing those shoulder blades together. For the W, I bring the hands up, don't shoot. We should be holding there for five seconds. And then I bring the hands behind, lift the palms up, hold there for 10 seconds, because we've got to do it twice. And then I come back to W, back to T, and back to Y. If body weight is super easy for you, then I recommend grabbing some light weights. It could be just a couple of pounds, it doesn't have to be super heavy. I found that really anything over five pounds per hand, it gets pretty sloppy pretty quickly. So either way, I'm holding onto some plates. I should be holding out for a Y. Same move for the T, W, I, and of course we go back the way we came in a Y, T, W, I, I, W, T, Y, or what we like to call in the gym, the Yitty Witty. our conditioning piece today we are doing a 12 minute arm rep and it's simple all we're trying to do is really work the shoulders work the triceps we are trying to do all the muscles that we're trying to build over this six week cycle particularly for our push-up focus we're trying to address them in our conditioning piece today so less of an aerobic heavy breathing piece more of a muscular endurance piece today so in our 12 minute arm rep i'm going to do a bear crawl and it says 20 20 so that means every time my hand touches the floor that's one so it'd be 20 20, 19, 19, and we're gonna show you how that will look in a second. From there, I'm gonna do some Hindu push-ups. We'll go over very quickly the four levels of the Hindu push-up that you can choose. We'll be doing 10 reps of that. From there, we roll over from our Hindu push-up. I'll be doing 10 nice and easy, regular body weight sit-ups. From there, we'll be back into a plank position, doing 10 per side of a mountain climber. And then from there, we get to roll back onto our back again to do the single leg V-up, or what we sometimes call the star sit-up here at the gym. We'll be doing 10 per side of that too. So we're gonna go through bear crawls, Hindu push-ups, sit-ups, mountain climbers, and the one arm V up, we're gonna do or single leg V up, or star sit up, whatever you want to call it. But we're going through those guys for as many times as you can in 12 minutes. So let's take a look at how all of those exercises should go down. If you can walk, you can bear crawl. All it is is transverse locomotion or you know contralateral locomotion. What does that mean? Opposite hand, opposite leg moves. So we're going to do the same thing but on the floor. So that means if I'm doing my bear crawl, you've got two choices. It's either going to be hips high or hips low. Choice is yours. And I'm moving opposite hand, opposite foot. So it says 20 and 20 on the board. So that means 20, 20, 90, 90, 18, 18, and so on and so forth. If you're in a small room, just do a few steps forwards and then do a few steps back. That's all we're looking to do as we do our bear crawl. That'll do. So the four bells we teach four levels of the Hindu push-ups, and we'll go through those very quickly. Ideally, we're trying to pick a level today where I can do all ten of my reps without having to take a big break. So level one, my knees at the end of the mat, I start with my nose pretty far away from the mat. I pull myself forwards, hips down, push up, dig the toes in, Hips to the ceiling. Level two, I now push the bum back, bring the forearms down, nose is super close to the mat, transition over the wrists, push up, hips to the ceiling. Level three is I bring the knees down, pull myself over without the knees touching the floor, and then do my Hindu push up. And last but not least, level four, the full enchilada, I pull myself down and push up without having to bring the knees down at all. So pick the level that works right for you. Level one, two, three, or four, and we're doing 10 reps of the Hindu push-up. With our standard setup, pretty easy fare today. All we need to think about in terms of our foot positioning is legs at about 90 degrees. We dig the heels in from there, what we like to call vampire style. We cross the arms. I'm gonna lay all the way down to the floor. And then from there, I sit all the way up, bring the elbows to the knees. Nice and smooth and simple for 10 glorious reps. For the mountain climbers, we can come back into a plank position and then work on a little bit of shoulder stability and some ab work at the same time. If you want a mat to protect your hands, feel free to do so. And if you don't, that's okay too. So with our hand position, I'm gonna to think to myself, in a mountain climber here at the four bells, we like to make them quite bouncy. So that means I'm gonna have my knee to my elbow and then from there, we're gonna do a little jump and I'm gonna switch legs. So that would be one rep. So we're doing 10 and 10. So it'd be 10, 
10, 9, 9. If this is a bit too aggressive for you in terms of jumping and hip mobility, we can also just bring the knee into the chest or we can just do smaller jumps. Either way, I'm doing 10 and 10 of a mountain climb. With our single leg V-up, we're trying to take all the components of a V-up, which means we're trying to bring our torso up at the same time, bring our legs up at the same time, but we're just doing it aiming for one leg today. So I'm gonna lay down, I'm gonna take both arms, and as I sit up, I'm gonna bring my hands to touch my left foot, and then my hands to touch my right foot, and we are doing 10 per side, trying to be nice and sequenced, nice and coordinated, as we go for 10 reps per side. So that's the last exercise in our 12 minute AMRAP. So we start off with bear crawls, 20 steps per hand. From there, Hindu push-ups for 10 reps, sit-ups for 10 reps, mountain climbers for 10 per side, and then single arm V-ups for 10 per side. And we go through that as many times as possible in 12 minutes. Have fun, let us know how you get on. And if you're not on Zoom, come join us on Zoom. You have a great time. Enjoy workout from home number 76.